Hi, I'm Peter Armstrong from St. Bryce Cycling Church in North Bay, Ontario. Uh, this is being recorded in late February 2021. Uh, right now we're in the midst of a pandemic around the world, uh, but there are also vaccines which are being circulated uh, to the idea is to uh, reduce or eliminate the effect of the uh, virus on lots and lots of people. But part of modern life is we also get information from all kinds of sources. You know, some of us from newspapers or the TV, others from social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, or other sources. And the confusing thing is that sometimes we get contradictory information. There's a lot of people saying, yes, we should definitely get those vaccines. Uh, but there are others who, other sources of information which are kind of raising questions or suggesting that maybe it's not a good idea. And that can put us in a puzzling position. You know, what should I do? Is it right for me or not? My intention in this video is not to kind of prevent all kinds of science to you, but I do want to try and equip you to help you make a good decision. Um, and the, questions, the question really is, is it appropriate for me to take this vaccine? There are, there are good indications which we can have whether or not a piece of information we have is trustworthy or not. And I've got a few of these points on the uh, easel here. Uh, the first point is, is it is the information we get consistent uh, with what we're hearing. If there's a thousand people who say one thing and one who says something different, well, it could be that that one person has some incredible insight that all the 1,000 others missed. But it's unlikely. Uh, usually, we live in a consistent world, uh, and if virtually everyone is giving a message to go ahead and take the vaccine. That's something that we should weigh carefully. A second thing which we need to ask about the information we get, whatever its source, is that does the person know what he or she is talking about? Are they competent? You know, if my, if my car needs repair, I go to a mechanic. I don't go to a lawyer. Or if I have a pain in my stomach, um, I go to a doctor, a medical doctor. I don't go to a professor. So if the, uh, if the person shows their credentials and how they, and shows what evidence they are, that they're open to sharing how that they can be reliable, what their background is, how informed they are, uh, that's, a, that's important. And if they downplay it, or if they won't say at all how they know this information, or I heard that someone says that second hand or third hand or more, that's another reason to be cautious um, uh, about whatever they claim. So how do we know a, uh, a piece of information we receive, say something we receive on Facebook, for instance, First question to ask, is it consistent with the main uh, messages, what we know about health uh, and vaccines at this point in the scientific community? Secondly, is the person who's speaking competent? Do we have good reason to be assured uh, when we step back that they know what they're talking about? A third, um, a third guide to see whether or not something is trustworthy or not is do we go for, to more than one source for information? Uh, for instance, for myself, uh, I both watch uh, news on the television, but I also get a weekly paper. I listen uh, daily to morning news from different sources, as well as um, looking at various websites or uh, Facebook feed or something like that. So if we're only hearing a voice from one location, uh, that's another reason why we're, it's appropriate to be cautious about whatever claims they are making. 
a fourth task, uh, if you will, for something's trustworthiness is to be aware of how it makes us feel. Sure, there can be lots of disturbing news in the world right now. Um, but if we're, um, if, if it's something which is breeding fear or uh, anxiety or hostility, uh, those are something that's, that's a caution if it's, if it's arousing a very strong emotional response. Because what we're trying to do is weigh the evidence. Uh, and if we have a very strong gut reaction to something, this is horrible, uh, then that's a, a reason to be cautious or even skeptical of that source. I'm, as, as you know, I serve in a local church, and so I'm informed by a Christian worldview. Uh, and there's a verse in uh, the first letter of John, uh, where John writes, perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. And we're called to love as Christians. But it strikes me that there's a great deal of fear uh, which is circulating in, uh, in our culture right now. Anxiety. Uh, and, but, it seemed, but the Bible teaches us, the New Testament teaches us, that fear and anxiety are not spiritually healthy for us. So can we take a step back and be aware about how we're feeling about something? And did it arise from this uh, flash which just came across our phone screen or whatever? So th this is not meant to be an exhaustive list, but this is a clue that to help us evaluate whether or not a source of information is trustworthy. And if it's, if it's upsetting us, making us anxious or uh, paranoid or anything like that, whatever it's saying, uh, that's a reason to step back. Uh, uh, I believe there's good reason to believe that the scientific community that informs the governments of the world about vaccines are trustworthy. That's not to say that anyone is perfect, uh, but I believe that the, there's strong evidence in their favor uh, that they're trustworthy. Um, and it's appropriate to go, as I've said already, to go to the right, to a good source, an informed source for our information. I think there's something our world is not uh, uh, magical or irrational, um, but we believe that God created this world, a loving God, a God who wants healing, and a God who, a God of order, has created the world. So I'd like to make a few points about the God who uh, Christians believe in and serve. What are some truths about God? And this has this has an impact for what we think about pandemics and vaccines and things. Well, the first thing we believe, one of the things we believe at least, is that the physical universe is consistent. That it's not arbitrary or that there's an order to the world. The very beginning of the very beginning of creation, the creation of the universe. Uh, says that God created order. Uh, so if a vaccine um, be behaves in one way in one place with one person, uh, with the, if there's someone next to them with identical conditions, uh, it's reasonable to expect the same kind of result. Uh, the second uh, point is that God wants healing for us all individually and collectively. It's not, of course, we live in a world in which there are uh, viruses and tragic events happen, uh, but God's overall plan is to want healing and wholeness for his people. And it's appropriate that we seek that. Uh, there's a verse in the Bible which says, I am the God who heals you. 
ultimately, all healing comes from God. A third principle is that God wants us to look after each other. There are some people who say, you know, I don't think that the vaccine, I don't think that the pandemic will affect me. Or if it does, I'm young and healthy, perhaps. I don't think it makes any difference. But we aren't alone. And we affect one another. And it's appropriate that we should care for one another. Uh, the story of, the, of being a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, is not only our commitment to God through Jesus Christ, but part of the package is that we care about each other and we have a responsibility uh, for each other. Even if something doesn't affect me personally, uh, if it affects someone who's close to me, we need to take that into consideration. A fourth principle is that God has a plan for our lives. Um, our lives are not random or fluky, uh, but God wants the best for you and for me. And remember, that includes healing and taking care of each other. But that's not to say uh, that we're like puppets who have no control, to say that God has a plan for us. We have agency. That is to say, we can do things which are cooperating with God, or we can choose to rebel against Him. That's up to us. I, you know where I'm coming from. I think it's not necessarily the easier thing, but the better thing, to learn God's will and to live in cooperation with Him through Jesus Christ. But God has a plan for us. And once again, part of that plan ultimately is for health and healing his world. My fifth point, is that my fifth point? I believe it is. Is that effort and self-sacrifice are part of a mature Christian life. I'm not going to promise you uh, that if you are a Christian that life will always be easy. In fact, to do the right thing is sometimes hard. Sometimes it takes effort and sometimes it takes self-sacrifice. But that's the way to go. That's part of the direction in following Jesus Christ. So in light of all these things, I believe that there's very good evidence that it's appropriate that we all take vaccines when it's judged the right time for us to do that. Presumably people who work with elderly people or people who are infirm are more likely to get the vaccines first. Um, but whatever our place is in line, I'm going to sign up. I won't jump the queue, uh, but I'm happy to take my place. And I encourage you to do the same. But in addressing this, I'm not just talking about vaccines though. My intent in producing this video is to help equip you so you can make a good judgment when you hear information to assess whether this is uh, the right thing for me to do or not. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with me. And I have all kinds of resources and evidence uh, to uh, back up what I'm saying. It's a good question to ask. Does Peter Armstrong really know what he's talking about? Um, and I'm not a scientist, but I do have, I think, a lot of resources which are very persuasive to me. And I've weighed about this carefully. I encourage you to do the same. And just in closing, I'm just going to say a short prayer. Uh, dear God, I just pray for your blessing upon all those who view this video. And I pray that people will be encouraged make wise decisions. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you and thank you for your time today.